Students, families, counselors, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining the National Catholic College Admission Association Virtual College Fair. We are so thrilled that you're spending your afternoon with us to learn about these Catholic institutions. And before we begin with our six by six model, I did wanna cover a few housekeeping items. First and foremost, we've got some awesome college reps that are here specifically to answer your questions. Yes, they're gonna present for six minutes on their institution, but they are also here waiting in the wings to answer any specific questions you have about their institution, about going to college in general, about Catholic institutions. So please use that Q&A. It can be a general question. What does test optional mean? Tell me about your basketball programs. Or it could be a more specific question. Hey, Holy Cross, tell me about your biology program. Feel free to do either of those questions throughout today's 45 minutes. All six of the representatives are here to answer questions the entire 45 minutes. You do not need to wait for that specific institution to be presenting to ask questions of that institution. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So any questions you have, type them in through that Q&A. This is hour one of our three hour virtual college fair. So we encourage you to sign up for more sessions at strivescan.com slash NCCAA, that exact same website you went to for today. And we are recording this session and all of the sessions. And that recording will be found tomorrow at that exact same website, strivescan.com slash NCCAA. We are in session A1, and oops, I thought I had the schedule here, and I don't. A1, we've got uh, Franciscan, uh, Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University, first up, followed by Benedictine College, University of St. Thomas, Iona College, College of the Holy Cross, and Duquesne University. We will go in that order, and we're going to hand it over to Rebecca. Feel free to grab screen share from me for our first institution to present on their six minutes. Take it away, Rebecca. Okay, sorry, I was muted. Um, so I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, I also hope you will all give me grace because I started at Fran U a little over a month ago and this is my second uh, presentation period ever. So bear with me if I stumble over my words, I'm trying not to be nervous, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. So I am Rebecca Gruntz. I'm an enrollment advisor here at Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University, formerly Our Lady of the Lake Catholic College, and now fondly known as Fran Yu. We're located in the medical district of Baton Rouge, right next to Our Lady of the Lake Hospital. At Fran Yu, we strive to educate and form Franciscan servant leaders of all faiths. Fran U is a private university with a healthcare niche, but that's not all we do. We offer over 20 associate, bachelor, and graduate level degree opportunities. We've also been awarded the Nightingale Award for our community service to the community. Redundant, my bad. Um, service is one of our one of the pillars of our university. Students are required to take a service learning course while enrolled at Fran U. Many of our students don't know what service learning is, but as they go through that course, they come to find that was the, the most exciting class and the most enjoyable one that they had. Those students are given the opportunity, whether they are in our marketing program or our nursing program, to give back to the community in whatever way their class decides. So let me click my next slide. I have two monitors going, so. Gotta keep up with what's what. So our university does have a healthcare niche, but in the last decade or so, we've added new and exciting degree programs ranging from associate to doctoral degrees, as well as multiple certificate opportunities. Many of our clinical program graduates have a first time pass rate of 100% on required testing, and there are plenty of guaranteed admission opportunities in those clinical programs as well. Fran U Financial Aid does accept TOPS, uh, Louisiana TOPS. We accept grants, scholarships, financial aid. Those are all awarded through FAFSA and our financial aid. Uh, we do have scholarships, which are awarded on a first come first serve basis. So the earlier you apply to Fran U, the better chance you have at getting a scholarship. Our admissions criteria for undergraduate programs is a 2.5 GPA and 20 ACT score if you're high school. If you're transferring from another university and have more than 30 credit hours, we don't need your ACT score and require 2.0 in your previous coursework. 
If you do decide you'd like to transfer and you're unsure of what credits will apply, we are happy to evaluate those courses for you. All we need is a copy of your transcript to determine what will flow into your coursework at FranU. That can be sent to admissions at franu.edu and it's free of charge. We enjoy doing them. That's a lie, they take a little bit of time, but we do them because we know it helps. So we are still accepting summer and fall 21 applications. You can visit franu.edu forward slash apply to start yours today. We also have our open house coming up this Saturday. So I don't know if any of you in the audience are in the area, South Louisiana, but we are so excited because we get to have an in-person event for the first time in a year. Uh, everyone will have on their masks. We're gonna be outside. We are praying, praying, praying that it does not rain. Um, but we're having that event and we're super, super excited. It's gonna be from nine to 11.30. Registration is still open and we are very happy to welcome uh, walk-ins as well. So if you need some more information on FranU, of course you can drop something in the QA to me. But if you want to visit our website, it's franu.edu forward slash experience. You can find us on Instagram at FranU Admissions. You can give us a call at 225-526-1631. And of course, reach out if you have any questions and we'd be happy to assist. I can't wait to see your smiling faces under your masks on campus. All right, thank you so much, Fran Yu, for sharing that information. We are going to drive 13 hours and 17 minutes from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the way up to Kansas. And our next institution is Benedictine College. Go ahead and grab screen share from me. It's a long drive, but definitely worth it. It'll probably be a beautiful one. Monica, uh, share with us a little bit more about Benedictine College. Perfect. All right, can you see, can you see my screen? Can you see the PowerPoint? We can see, yeah, but the previews as well. Okay, perfect. How about that? Looks good, thank you. Perfect, all right. Well, my name is Monica Nelson and I am one of the admission counselors here at Benedictine College. Uh, so if you're not familiar, we are in Atchison, Kansas. Uh, we are a smaller private liberal arts college about 45 minutes north of the Kansas City area. And I'll just give you a quick overview of who we are and what we're all about here. Uh, so we are on the Newman Guide. So we are one of the 13 colleges that are listed as some of the top colleges, uh, Catholic colleges in the US. So we've been really excited to be recognized on that list, along with the US News and World Report. Um, so just gaining national recognition on multiple levels has been very exciting for us and really affirming of the mission that we have here. Uh, we also have one of the top five campus ministry programs. There's tons of different ways to get involved on campus. We have a club fair and a ministry fair each semester so that you really get to see everything that you get to be involved in as a student here uh, at Benedictine. We are the largest private college in the state of Kansas. Um, and like I mentioned, we're in Atchison, Kansas. So it's pretty much smack dab in the middle of the country. Um, and so our student body is really made up of a wide variety of students from all over the country. So we have just under 2000 undergraduates, uh, students from 47 different states and 20 countries around the world. Um, in fact, 75% of our students come from out of state. I'm originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we have students from coast to coast and everywhere in between. Um, so it's really neat to see all of these students kind of come together for this common mission that we have here. I'm really attracted to who we are at Benedictine. So that mission that I mentioned, we are a very mission driven college um, and our mission is to educate our students within a community of faith and scholarship. And the way that we do that is supported by these four pillars here. So we like the visuals that you get to see these four different pillars um, and what we're all about. So our mission is supported by the fact that we are first and foremost a Catholic college um, and we, you know, we uh, aren't apologetic in that. It's just who we are and it's uh, really impacts everything that we do at the college. We're also founded in the Benedictine tradition. So we have a Benedictine monastery on campus. So there's Benedictine monks who teach classes and are, are involved in our campus ministry program. 
are also a liberal arts college. Uh, so students will take a wide variety of classes outside of their majors in theology, philosophy, foreign language. Uh, we really want our graduates to be able to think outside the box and really stand out to their employers um, when looking for various internship and job opportunities. Um, we're also a residential college. So 75% uh, of our students live on campus. So the majority of our student body is, is right on campus in various living styles and dorms all the way up to on-campus apartments and we even have on-campus houses uh, but we really think that contributes to the community here at Benedictine so that everyone's really engaged in what we are we're doing here. Uh, so I mentioned our location pretty much look at that right in the middle of the country just a day's drive from a lot of the major cities in the area and just about like I said 45 minutes north of the Kansas City Airport um, so transportation to and from campus is pretty easy and we attract students from all across the country so if you've never been to this part of the country to Kansas or the Midwest these are just some visuals that you can see of Kansas City um, and Atchison where we are located smaller town here a lot of really cute shops and locally owned places and, and these are some surrounding areas as well so beautiful especially in the fall time um, just a really beautiful area to be so that liberal arts pillar uh, we have 50 different majors that you can choose from uh, including art and architecture and theater and theology and pretty much everything in between. Uh, so we are really excited about some of our majors that stand out being that we do offer architecture. We have a fully accredited engineering program. Um, nursing and business and education are also among some of our most popular majors. Uh, but as you can see on the screen, there's a wide variety to choose from. So uh, you'll be working with academic advisors to really hone in on what your intended major is. Uh, but along the way, you'll also be taking those liberal arts classes to just gain an even greater understanding and a broader perspective on your major. Another opportunity that we offer our students is a study abroad program. We have a, a campus in Florence, Italy, where we send about 50 of our students each semester and over the summer to take a full load of classes over in Italy. Um, it's an amazing experience. You can take foreign language credits um, and just have an incredible opportunity to travel abroad with some of your classmates. We also have various uh, programs of distinction that you can apply for. So you can see those on the screen. If any of those interest you, definitely reach out to us as these are separate applications than just the general application to Benedictine, but can really enhance your academic experience. Financial aid is offered to every student. We have academic scholarships and we work individually with families uh, through the FAFSA and the whole financial aid process to make sure we can make things as affordable and possible for you. Uh, but in the end, Benedictine really delivers real results. We have students doing meaningful work all across the country, and we're really proud of all the amazing things that our alum have done and the amazing connections that we have uh, with our alum all across the country. So looking ahead here, these are kind of some next steps. If you're a junior looking ahead to August, definitely be sure to submit that application and reach out to me with any questions that you have in the meantime. My contact is on the screen. We'd love to have you on campus for a visit sometime soon. Uh, and thanks so much for listening. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Monica, for sharing that information. Now we're gonna drive uh, six hours and 44 minutes up north. So we went from Louisiana to Kansas, and now we're going all the way up to Minnesota for the University of St. Thomas. And uh, Thomas, go ahead and take it away. Sure, and I love the exact time of, oh, that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay, can you, does that work? The screen share? Looks good, thanks. Set. Sure, well, first of all, my name is Thomas, and I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of St. Thomas. Um, Oh, I think I got out of that. Okay, so uh, I'm an admissions counselor at St. Thomas and a little bit about us at St. Thomas for those of you that aren't familiar or have never been, um, we are located in St. Paul and Minneapolis, so the Twin Cities. Um, and as a student, the Twin Cities is a top 15 metro area in the country, which I think is really exciting. Like you're in super close proximity to like everything, all the sports, the restaurants, the shopping, the fun art and music and everything that, go, that goes on in a big city. But we're still in a really residential part. And you can see on the left side of the screen here, um, our main campus location is in St. Paul. Um, we have about 6,000 undergrad students and 4,000 grad students. 
which does make us the largest private school in the state of Minnesota. And when I think of the student experience for students coming to St. Thomas, uh, we're sort of a hybrid where we're not big enough where it doesn't seem like you don't know anyone on campus. You're still meeting new people all the time. You're still seeing the same faces, um, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. But it's also not small enough where it's like a high school 2.0 where you see the same people all the time. Like you're constantly meeting new people, you're seeing new faces. Um, and, and you just get a little bit more of that personalized experience. Um, as far as academics and you know ways to get involved on campus, similar to what some of the other colleges have been presenting and will present so far, I think one of the highlights of going to a private Catholic school like St. Thomas is the personal attention that you as a student are getting in the classroom. Um, at St. Thomas, our average class size is about 21 and most classes are capped at 30. So for a lot of students, it's really similar to I guess the high school experience that you've been getting so far, where all the professors know your name, they know where you're from, they know who you are. Um, I went to St. Thomas myself, I graduated about four years ago. And I always thought what college was gonna be like was what you see on you know movies and TV shows of a big lecture hall and you're sitting in the back and you're trying to stay awake and take notes. And then I got to St. Thomas and if you come to St. Thomas, you'll experience it. it it's really similar to your high school size. Um, I, I would say as long as you're showing up and you pay attention and you're not on like TikTok or link or Instagram or whatever all day. You know, you pay attention. The professors really take notice and are, are really a great uh, resource for you in the class. Um, I actually got a question a couple of days ago about what the classroom experience is like. And I really think that the word for that is more collaborative. Like you're going to have a lot of group projects. You're going to have a lot of um, in-class interactions with professors, with other students. Um, so it's not just like cutthroat, hey, I'm gonna go and show up to class and do my work. It's, hey, let me work with my classmates. Let me work with my peers and, and work to figure out these problems together. Um, I, I know a question that students always wanna know is what are your largest programs? And at St. Thomas, we do have about a hundred majors and a little over 50 minors to choose from. So there's a pretty comprehensive list. Uh, on the top right, you'll see our largest programs in terms of size. Um, number one is business and that makes sense. Uh, we're in the Twin Cities, um, so many, there's like 18 Fortune 500 companies in Minnesota. So it makes sense. Uh, a little under 40% of our students are business majors. And then you see anything in the health sciences. Um, a lot of our students wanna go into med school or some form of grad school. Then we have communications, engineering and psychology that round out the top five. Uh, but again, we have about a hundred programs. So there are a lot of different options for you as a student to choose from. Um, I know one of the other schools, and I forget which one, um, is also a liberal arts university. It's similar to us at St. Thomas. I, I think one of the benefits of going to a private or Catholic school that's a liberal arts school as well, is we're not just training you for a career. Like you're not just taking business classes. You're not just taking engineering classes and you're not just learning to, to be that profession. You're also taking classes in the liberal arts. So like English, math, science, uh, for us at St. Thomas, theology and philosophy, which really teaches you to be a well-rounded a well student. Um, and a lot of those classes, you're learning more soft skills as well. So how to express yourself in writing, how to get up in front of a group and present and get more of those like soft speaking skills as well. Um, and one of the other benefits of that as a student, I know your juniors, your sophomores, you're just starting to think about college is you do have until the end of your sophomore year to officially declare a major. So it also gives you a little bit more time to try out different classes and really start to think a little bit more in depth about, you know, what classes and what programs are interesting to you. Lastly, I just want to touch on financial aid. Um, being a private school, uh, financial aid is awarded based on what you've been doing in high school academically. So as a senior, when you apply, you'll submit your transcript um, and about 90% of students receive merit-based scholarships. So at that, we look at your grades, we look at trends of your grades, um, everything that you've been doing in school, your leadership, your extracurricular activities, and then we award aid. So I would encourage you when you're looking at a private school, like don't be scared of price initially because it looks high and it is a high sticker price, but there's a lot of aid that can really start to bring that down once you start to apply and go through the application process a little bit more in depth. Um, and then to round it off, again, I know a lot of you are from around the country, but we do offer in-person and virtual visits as well to come and look at St. Thomas. Um, I know this is, of course, a, such a crazy last year of trying to go and, and learn more about colleges and programs. But we, we would love to obviously have you on campus and, and meet with us. So thank you.
Great. Thank you so much, Thomas, for sharing that information on your institution. Students, a reminder, you can use that Q&A to ask any questions throughout the duration of today's webinar. Uh, of all of our panelists, we've got some really great folks that are here to answer questions. You could drive 20 hours and 11 minutes from uh, Saint University of St. Thomas uh, to College of the Holy Cross. That's a long drive and you may get stuck in traffic. It is a very quick two hour and 40 minute flight into Boston Logan. Uh, so next up, we've got College uh, of the Holy Cross and I encourage you, Michael, go ahead and grab screen share and go ahead and start your presentation. All right, sorry about that. I'm to find my unmute button. All right, everybody, thanks so much for uh, for popping in here and getting a chance to hear a little bit about College of the Holy Cross. Um, we'll start first just a little bit of a, a photo here of campus to give you a bit of an idea of what it is that we're all about and what campus really looks like, the footprint of the campus looks like. Um, as mentioned, we are located in Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, second largest city in New England, about 45 minutes west of Boston. Uh, but again, you can see here from the, uh, the shot of the campus that we are not in downtown Worcester. You do still have that traditional campus experience to very much be able to take advantage of um, uh, during your day in and day out experiences as a college student. Um, some of the fast facts of Holy Cross, I'll just quickly throw all, all five of these up here that really make us the institution that we are. Uh, we are a smaller school in size. We're a school of about 3,000 undergraduate students total. And that second bullet point, that undergrad only focus, um, really goes hand in hand with the size. And that 3,000 is the true population of the college. So there are no grad students, no grad programs whatsoever. Uh, so you're going to find that 3,000, again, is that true number that you're going to see. And it also means that you're going to find a faculty, a faculty group that's really dedicated to the undergraduate experience. You know, they're not teaching graduate students. They're not dividing their attention amongst this different cohort. Uh, they're really there, not only, of course, to teach all of their classes that, again, don't have the graduate assistance to be able to teach the classes for them, uh, but they're also going to be there just as a resource. Uh, so as you're going through this college process, and you're trying to answer these questions of, what am I doing with the rest of my life? Because that's not a big question or anything. Uh, you have those resources available. You have that active faculty group that you, you can use as a sounding board to ask questions of when it comes to, is this major the right fit program for me? Or is this internship experience something that can really better me as a, as a, as a potential professional moving into an industry? Or is that research program something that I might wanna pursue? And so it's a really wonderful aspect, I think that our students really benefit from uh, having that undergrad only focus as part of our, our uh, academic as well, just general campus experience. Um, we are also a liberal arts institution. This is the overarching academic philosophy at Holy Cross. Uh, what it means for those of you going through the college search process, it means that you don't need to answer the question of what are you doing with the rest of your lives before you even step foot on a college campus. In fact, all of our freshmen start out as undecided. So first semester of freshman year, everybody on paper is an undecided student. So again, you don't need to know that answer right now. If you have intended majors, if you have things that you're thinking of, Fantastic. Start to take some classes towards those intended areas of study uh, in that first semester, second semester, freshman year experience. And if you solidify an interest, awesome. Declare a major as early as second semester, freshman year. But if you want to take a little bit more time, uh, as is normally the case, typically about 75% of all students who go to any college or university change their major at least once before graduating. So if you find that there's a new major, if you find a new program, if something else is piquing your interest, then you have that flexibility to be able to change and really take advantage of, uh, of a curriculum, again, that is rooted in the liberal arts and allows you again to be able to study across those great uh, those disciplines. Um, we are also a Jesuit Catholic institution. So if you're not familiar with the terminology, Jesuit is a specific order of Catholicism. We are a uh, member of the Jesuit network. It's actually 27 schools across the United States that make up that Jesuit network. And again, we are one of those Jesu uh, those 27 Jesuit schools. Um, we of course believe in the idea of really being active members of the community who better the community through their actions. And that's really the Jesuit nutshell, the Jesuit philosophy in a nutshell. So we want to see our students engage in the campus community of course, through areas like community service and volunteer work, faith-based opportunities as well. But we'll also see students being a part of the 27 Div Division I uh, clubs, uh, athletics, I should say, club sports and intramural sports, performing arts, the multicultural groups, pre-professional advising programs, and the professional groups that we have available. So we see an overwhelmingly active campus community, also an overwhelmingly residential campus community. About 90% of our students actually live on campus for all four years. And as I mentioned before, we are located in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I do want to emphasize that pronunciation. You can see here from the spelling, it does look like Worcester. It is actually Worcester, Massachusetts. So we do drop a few letters there in the middle to get that pronunciation. But if you're going to drop letters, you should also make sure you drop the R at the end to acclimate yourself to the mass area. It's Worcester, Massachusetts, if you're really going to feel like a, a real a, a native of the region. Um, so I'd like to throw up here, again, just a couple other photos of campus to give you a bit of an idea, as I mentioned before, uh, of what the campus looks like. As I mentioned, a lot of green space, just really a real traditional campus feel for sure. This is a great shot that shows just the proximity 
proximity of downtown Worcester. If you're not familiar with the city itself, as I mentioned earlier, second largest city in New England and a great college town, 35,000 college students total in and around the city among the Worcester Consortium schools. So a series of colleges and universities. And there is a formal agreement among the consortium. You can take classes free of charge across the different campuses, but you'll also find that intangible benefit of really just a, a, a college population that dictates the atmosphere and the personality of the city. So great downtown areas, dining, restaurants, shopping areas, uh, athletic scene in Worcester is very cool. We're bringing in uh, the AAA affiliate to the Boston Red Sox. We'll be calling them the Woo Sox. Uh, they're building a brand new stadium in downtown Worcester. We're excited about what that's gonna add for sure. Uh, so a lot going on. And I mentioned as well, again, just over one hundred clubs and organizations, so a whole lot happening on campus to be a part of in so many different ways. In terms of admission at Holy Cross, for those of you who are uh, potentially looking to apply, we offer two different ways to apply, early decision and regular decision, so a binding and a non-binding process respectively, and you'll find, of course, all of these, uh, these dates and deadlines on our website. Just a quick shot at the admission checklist, things that we are looking for, the application, of course, Common App or Coalition App, high school transcripts and recommendation letters are required. Optional pieces you can see here, we are a test optional institution, and I should note that we have been a test optional institution. This is now 16 years reading out applications as a test optional school, and we also pay a lot of attention to demonstrated interest. So interviews are strongly encouraged in our process, and you can find more information uh, about those on our website. So feel free to take a look there. And I will wrap up quickly here just with our financial aid policy. We're relatively straightforward when it comes to financial aid. We meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our families. So in other words, the gap between expected family contribution and tuition, that's gonna be your need. And again, we meet that for all of our families. We also have some merit-based scholarships in addition to that. Um, but that is our financial aid policy. And that is everything that I have. So thank you all so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Great, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing that information. And uh, last but not least, we're gonna hop on the Amtrak because we've already driven all the way up from Louisiana to Minnesota. We've flown all over to uh, uh, Boston area. And now we're gonna take a 13 hour train ride uh, all the way into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for our final institution, Duquesne University. So we're taking the train over to Duquesne. Uh, go ahead and grab a screen share from me, Rachel. And students, a reminder, use that Q&A, send in your questions. You've got some really knowledgeable admissions reps here to answer your questions. Rachel, take it away. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Rachel McCloskey, and I am one of the assistant directors here at Duquesne University. Um, Duquesne is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So we are located in Western PA, um, and we were founded in 1878 by the Spiritan priests. Um, we are the only Spiritan institution um, across the United States, and we are Catholic by founding but welcoming to all. Um, our motto is we serve God by serving our students and helping to foster success, having them go out into the community and then to continue on serving their community. Um, something really unique about the Spiritans, they came to Pittsburgh um, at a time when a lot of people were leaving the area due to the heavy amount of pollution from the steel industry. And they were I mean, still are completely dedicated to equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Um, specifically in the 1800s, they were looking to serve European immigrants, um, children that wouldn't have been able to afford an education otherwise. Um, they essentially started an inaugural class of about 50 students, and since then we have grown immensely. Um, we are considered a mid-sized institution. We are sitting right around 9,500 for total enrollment, and of that, 6,000 of those students are undergraduates. And we're really proud of these bottom two numbers, our student to faculty ratio of 14 to 1, as well as our average class size, which is 30. Um, so again, kind of very similar. I feel like an overarching tone is a lot of your classes and, and from who you've heard from this evening, um, similar to maybe what you're experiencing in high school now. And you truly have the best of both worlds um, here at Duquesne. So this, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, um, I would definitely add it to your list. Um, it is a city, you know, an East Coast um, city that essentially has a Midwest feel, um, which is always super great. Um, Pittsburgh is consistently ranked one of the most livable cities in the US, which means that our grads can come to school here, pursue a degree, and then afford to live in the area after graduation. Um, we are situated on 50 acres of private space in the downtown area. So you have your own college campus, it's a park-like setting. And within the downtown area, there are opportunities for internships, 
clinicals, student teaching, essentially any major at Duquesne can find an internship in the downtown area. And we are steps from the cultural district. So within the cultural district, you have world-class theaters, the opera, ballet, um, dining, shopping, restaurants. Um, you have these beautiful rivers surrounding you um, where you can kayak and canoe. And as a fun fact, Pittsburgh actually has more bridges than Venice does. So very proud of our waterways um, and how far essentially they've brought the city. Regarding academics, we have eight schools of study here at Duquesne. Um, and in those essentially eight, nine schools of study, um, we have 80 plus undergrad majors. Um, we're currently sitting right around 86 and they're constantly adding new programs to that list. We offer numerous direct entry programs. So what does direct entry mean? You can apply as a freshman essentially and earn your spot and you no longer have to reapply at a later date. So nursing, physician assistant studies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, a six year pharmacy program, a lot of really great option in that regard. And then lots of hands-on experience, whether you are a business student and you're working with a corporate partner your first year, a 21 week long clinical immersion that's paid within our nursing program or getting yourself into the classroom to shadow, so many different opportunities to really ensure that you're pursuing a major that has interest for you. These are some accolades I just wanted to share. I'm not gonna read these all to you. You can also find these online. The bottom line is you want to attend a university that you're gonna feel prepares you um, to go out into the world, whether that's professional school or to find a job. And our grads are very much doing that. Um, what, I'm, what we're most excited to share is that we are actually gonna be starting our own osteopathic medical school in 2024. Um, this will be the first Catholic medical college in Pennsylvania. We're incredibly excited about that if anybody has a pre-med interest in the audience. And kind of going back to that too. So like, again, you know, you want to ensure that you have a great education behind you um, and that you're going to be prepared for the real world. So that's where career prep comes into play. And our career development office starts connection with connecting with you um, essentially day one of your first year. So they're offering workshops and presentations, mock interviews. Um, we have a job and internship there every semester and we have incredible or I guess incredibly loyal employers that come back every year just because they love Duquesne students so much. And we also can offer lifelong career management for, you know, for students. Let's say five years down the line, you want to change careers, you can come back essentially and kind of walk through that with our career counselors. Regarding the application process, um, for any juniors on the call that are looking to next year and you're kind of working through, you know, what the process is going to be for you, we are a rolling admission school for the most part. Um, our only at hard application deadline is December 1st for our physician assistant studies students. So if you are not interested in physician assistant studies, we essentially review from July to May. Um, we have a Duquesne application, which opens up on July 1st, and we are a Common App school and Common App opens up on August 1st. Um, so these are just some deadlines. We also abide by the national um, deposit deadline of May 1st. For PA students, you would be looking at February 1st. And regarding requirements, um, so you can check out our website to find um, what, what materials we might require. So duq.edu slash apply. And I also wanted to include um, our minimum requirements. So our minimum GPA would be a 3.0 and our minimum SAT would be a 1080 or a 21 on the ACT. Um, we have also been a test optional school for quite some time. However, not all programs were test optional. So a lot of our health sciences at some point were requiring a test score. This year, every major at Duquesne was a test optional program. Um, I imagine that will continue into next year. That hasn't been officially released yet, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, we essentially, we're very transparent. We want our students to have the best, um, essentially foot forward as they're applying. Um, and I just wanted to share, we are open for visits. Um, In-person visits, we're 30 minutes from the Pittsburgh International Airport if you're flying in. Um, and we would love to see you on campus. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing that information. And in our final few minutes here, we're going to do uh, what I call a round robin. I would be remiss if I did not mention, I apologize, Iona College was unable to join us uh, today. So um, they will still be in touch with you afterwards. But um, if you came here, oh, I, Ryan is here. 
I take this back. We're actually going to go to Ryan at Iona College uh, for their six minutes. So Ryan, go ahead and grab screen share from me and give the presentation. Sorry about that. No problem. So my apologies for being just a few minutes behind. But give me a second. Perfect. Excellent. Take it away. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. I just want to take a little bit to talk about Iona College. For those of you who don't know Iona College, Iona College, we are a small private Catholic institution in New Rochelle, New York. If you're unfamiliar with New Rochelle, New York, we are in southern Westchester um, in New York State. Uh, that puts me about 20 minutes out of Midtown Manhattan. Um, we're right off the MTA line, so it's an easy trip into Midtown Manhattan for students who are coming in from, say, the Northeast uh, Amtrak or they're coming in from the New York City area. Um, I do like to take an opportunity to talk a little bit about the numbers and kind of who we are. I think this gives us a couple of good insights to what we're doing here at Iona College. Our total enrolled students is gonna be about 4,000 students in total at the college, um, 3,000 of whom would be our undergraduates. We have about 1,000 graduate students taking coursework here. Um, about 58% of our first year students live on campus this year. That number is a little bit skewed. We are back and we are in person. We're offering all of our courses work via uh, mixed mode this year, meaning uh, we're, both, we're offering everything simultaneously in person and also in Zoom rooms simultaneously. So students have the opportunity to decide what they'd like to do. That threw up our, our kind of first year housing uh, for the year. Usually you're going to see that number a little closer to 70%. 94% uh, of students are employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. That's a stat that we are very proud of. And I think a good reason that happens is here at Iona College, we feature uh, a, a unique opportunity for students to build relationships with their faculty members as we keep the student to faculty ratio very small here at Iona College. We're averaging about uh, 14 to one here at the college. There's plenty to do on campus. Um, we have 80 clubs and organizations featured within the organization. We continue to grow and 100% of our students receive scholarship and or financial aid here at the institution. And that is something that we are incredibly proud of. I do want to take a, a brief moment uh, to talk about some of the state of the art spaces here on campus. Um, we are an institution that is transitioning and we're transitioning greatly. Um, we brought in a new president about a year and a half, nearly two years ago. And with that, we have recently opened a brand new business building featured here. Uh, we've opened a high institute for entrepreneurship. We have had the opportunity to open up a new uh, state-of-the-art 7,500 square foot nursing facility along with a new nursing BSN degree. So we've had an opportunity to do a lot of different things. We're gonna continue that growth as we look to the future. Uh, quite recently, we signed an agreement in principle with uh, um, another institution. Uh, that institution will be closing its doors, unfortunately, at the end of this fiscal year. And that gives Iona the opportunity to increase our campus footprint by roughly about 73% um, with another campus, which is about a few minutes from where we are presently. I do want to take a brief moment to talk about our academic programs. Uh, oftentimes students and families will ask me, what's your, what's your best academic program or what's the program that you're most known for? And it's a good question. I encourage students to ask it all the time, but it's a really difficult question for me to answer because we have a lot of things for students to study. One of the great distinctions though that I'd like to make is we have two separate schools within Iona College. First and foremost, we have the School of Arts and Sciences. The School of Arts and Sciences will contain programming within your social sciences, obviously your natural sciences, your communications programs. All of those programs are contained within the School of Arts and Sciences. We also have the Lapenta School of Business, an AACSB accredited business program, uh, which means among other things that, you know, placing us within the top 5% of programs in the world. Um, we have all of those programs uh, within our our Lapenta School of Business. There are some really unique things that we are offering here at Iona College. We have several direct admit programs. Uh, we have a, a brand new Bachelor of Science in Nursing program that is a direct admission program for students. Um, and we also have two other allied healthcare programs that are direct admit programs as well. Uh, we have a master's in occupational therapy program. Students can apply for that as an incoming freshman. And we also have a communication sciences and disorders, most commonly referred to as speech language pathology. Likewise, uh, it is a graduate program, but students can enter in a freshman year. We have a couple of uh, relationships with some other uh, institutions in the nation. Uh, we have a, a relationship with LACOM, which is Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, and also Seton Hall Law School um, for students to select from. 
There's a couple of great opportunities for students to uh, customize their academic experience here at Iona College. The Honors Program is one of them. I'm not going to go through the entire slide just to be mindful of time. However, a couple of things I think are really unique about what we're doing in the Honors Program. Firstly, every student in the Honors Program receives a scholarship. Secondly, every student also receives 24 free credits that they can use during alternate semesters here at the college. That would be non-fall and spring, so like intersection work and things of that nature. The really exciting thing is students can also utilize those 24 free credits credits during a study abroad experience to leverage the, and, and lessen that cost if that's something that they were interested in. Oftentimes families will ask me, what do we do when our student is having a tough time? And I always like to re reframe that question and say, you know, what do you do when uh, your students have a tough time? Because at the end of the day, you know, we're meant to challenge you at the collegiate level. Um, so we have comprehensive supports for students here on campus to ensure that all students who come to Iona are successful in and outside of the classroom. To take a brief note about our community, we guarantee housing all four years. Uh, we have seven residences for students to live in, and, and we have all the common amenities that you would expect a, uh, a modern campus to have. Some unique things we're doing for our commuter students, however, is we actually have an opportunity for students to join in a program in a commuter assistant program. Um, just like many residents on campus have a residential assistant, all of our commuters also have an upperclassman mentor who can work with them through their entire four-year experience. Uh, and, and sharing that mentor-mentee relationship that usually residents and residential assistants oftentimes have. Certainly no, no conversation about the college would be complete without talking about career services. Um, at the end of the day, we undoubtedly leverage our location right outside of New York City. That said, being in Southern Westchester certainly has its advantages as well. Um, we have so many employers that we have wonderful relationships with that we've built over time to send our students to. And one thing that's very important to note is students aren't limited from our, our perspective in the college environment, as in we encourage students to start the um, internship process as soon as possible. So if you came in freshman year, you were really ambitious and you want to have an internship, you would be able to do just that. Thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing that information. We have to stick to that six minutes. Um, so you I apologize, it. we have to cut you off here. Um, I am gonna invite all of my panelists uh, on screen for just the last uh, two and a half minutes or so. Uh, we're gonna do a very quick round robin uh, just to give students a little bit more flavor on your institution. So uh, the question I'd like to ask all of you is what is your favorite tradition on campus? Uh, we're gonna start with Fran Yu, then Benedictine, St. Thomas, Iona, College of the Holy Cross, followed by Duquesne. So let's go in that order. Favorite tradition, starting with Rebecca. So as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, I'm still very new to Fran Yu but I did actually get an opportunity to go to our blue light night, which is an adoration, um, confession, benediction opportunity for students. I feel like that really was, it was open to students, open to the community, uh, presented by the Franciscan Experience, which is a summer program each year. And that really just touched my heart. And I feel like that's an amazing tradition that Fran Yu has started. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Monica, favorite tradition at uh, Benedictine College? Yeah, so we have this tradition called the Beanie Tradition, and um, every incoming freshman during orientation week gets one of these beanies that they wear uh, for like the first week of school. Um, and the tradition is if an upperclassman pulls their beanie, if they see them around campus, they have to go to the highest point that they can and caw three times like a raven because we're the Benedictine Ravens. Um, and then what's really cool is when you graduate, you wear it under your mortarboard. Um, and so it's like a little part of your beginning at Benedictine. In, and then you end with the beanie as well. So Excellent. something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Thank you. Next up, Thomas. Uh, yeah, Thomas from University of St. Thomas. Yeah, for us, we call it March Through the Arches. We have like an archway that's one of the main entrances to campus. And uh, freshmen, one of their like welcome days, they all gather outside and all the faculty and staff sort of welcome them into campus. And then on graduation, they do the reverse of it, sort of welcoming them or pushing them out to the world. And it's one of those things where when as a freshman, you think it's kind of cheesy, like, okay, cool. But then as a senior, no one wants to miss it because it's just one of those cool traditions you look back on. Excellent. Ryan, how about a favorite tradition at Iona College? Iona, my favorite tradition is homecoming without a doubt. Um, we have a excellent rugby, a club rugby program. Uh, we play um, some great schools every homecoming. Um, we have our bagpipe band just blaring out some, some great tunes right before the rugby game. We have our alumni on campus and, and it just, it really gets me fired up um, in our student body as well to uh, see everybody at homecoming. Cool. Michael, favorite tradition at uh, College of the Holy Cross? 
Yeah, for sure. Mine's actually midnight breakfast. It happens the, uh, the evening before finals week kicks into gear where our students are up and studying anyway. Uh, the faculty, the staff members come out and get together and we actually cook breakfast for them in the dining hall. And so nothing like a, a little brinner uh, to get you going before your uh, your finals week kicks into gear. But who doesn't love a, a midnight bacon strip? I love me a midnight bacon strip. That's great. Excellent. And finally, last but not least, Rachel, favorite tradition at Duquesne University? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my favorite traditions is carnival. Um, and this is, it, it's definitely different for every, I feel, class that has graduated from Duquesne. Um, it takes place on our academic walk, which is used to be a street in Pittsburgh that was closed off. And it essentially spans campus, um, really beautiful fountains, place, places to be outside. But different clubs and organizations will set up fun booths um, with different fun things to eat and games to play, um, lots of really fun giveaways. Um, and I would say that's mine. Excellent. Well, thank you so much to the college reps who spent their uh, afternoon with us. Um, there were some questions that did not get answered yet. I will be sending the, the list of questions to all of the reps so they will follow up with you via email, especially the ones that came in just at the last minute here. Students, thank you for joining us for this hour. A reminder, there are more sessions happening next hour and at the seven o'clock central hour as well. So we hope you'll join us for uh, to hear from additional institutions. Uh, as you close this box, a very quick survey will pop up. We do ask for your feedback. And uh, thank you all so much for spending your afternoon with us. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.